Okay, you guys have been asking for it. You wanted me to look at more Euro cars, so here's one. We have a 2002 Mini Cooper with a 1.6 turbo engine. The complaint with this vehicle is it was bought at an auction and it will not start. The starter was replaced and the battery was replaced before it came to us and it cranks very slowly. So the first thing is I'm going to let you hear what the engine sounds like. Go ahead and crank it. All right, cool. Okay, obviously very, very poor cranking engine. And again, the battery is new, starter's new. And so the next thing that we want to do is some voltage measurements at the battery, voltage and current. And we'll, we'll kind of get an idea what kind of amperage the starter is pushing and then what kind of voltage we have at the battery. Battery's in the trunk on this. I'm using an inductive ammeter on the battery cable. We're just using the negative cable because it's smaller and I can get the jaws of my low amp probe around it. We'll measure start, starter current with that and then you can see I'm connected directly to the battery itself for our voltage level. So we're going to look at voltage and current at the same time on the scope. The conversion, I've done this before in some other videos using the, the low amp probe for relative compression testing. And the setting that we're on is a 40 amp setting and we're not going to use the presets here but I am using a 40 amp setting which is every 10 millivolts is one amp of current. And so I'm going to be measuring a few hundred amps with this. My scales on the Varus only have a 20 and a 40 amp preset so I cannot use those. I have to do some math and the math with this is a 2 volt scale would be a 200 amp reading, a 5 volt scale would be a 500 amp reading with the settings I'm using on this low amp probe. That's every 10 millivolts is 1 amp. So my green trace is going to be set on a 5 volt which is 500 amps and my yellow trace we're going to be looking at battery voltage. Okay, go ahead and crank that. Okay, freeze that, we'll go back and look at it. This is the frozen picture of our cranking. You see our voltage fluctuations here. You know, we're, we're hovering around 10 volts, so it's not a battery voltage problem, at least not at the battery. And to save time, I'll tell you guys, we already checked this up at the start or two and it was the same. So we do not have a voltage drop on this battery. It is not a battery voltage problem. What we don't like is the amperage is flatlined at 2.5 or 250 amps and it's not changing. Now, one of the things that I may have just discovered here is using this inductive low amp probe. This might be the limit of what we can read with this thing. You know, we're really not supposed to be reading this kind of amperage anyway. The, the maximum is 60 amps or 40 amps as far as the setting goes. I've always assumed that I could read, you know, whatever with this, just the scales are going to be wrong and that, that may actually be false. So the reason I'm thinking that this is not a valid reading, now I know my amperage is very high. I can at least verify that. We're at 250, at least 250. But the reason I'm saying that this is invalid is you're not going to have these voltage fluctuations without an amperage fluctuation. It's just physically not possible. We have to be seeing amperage pulses here and we're not. And so my concern is that this low amp probe will not read higher than this, than this uh, voltage on this setting. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a high amp probe uh, off of my Pico and, and it's a BNC adapter and I'll, I'll, I'll use a BNC to a banana style clip and we'll see if we can get a high amp probe reading on this next. Definitely too much amperage though. Using the Pico high amp probe connected to the Varus now I'm using a BNC adapter so I can connect it to this and the settings for this amp probe are one millivolt per amp. So with me on a five 
volt scale that is way too high. That would be more like 5,000 amps. So we don't want that. So every one millivolt is one amp. So one volt would be 1,000 amps. 500 millivolts would be 500 amps. And I think what we're going to do is start on that scale, see what we have, go from there. Get my digital up here so you guys can see that too. Okay, go ahead and crank that. Okay, great. Perfect. So we learned a couple things here. One is the low amp probe that I'm using on the Varus. Sorry, yeah. The low amp probe I'm using on the Varus to do compression testing and things like that. It looks like we can do it as long as the amperage is less than 250 amps. It looks like I found the limit on that tool, which is 250 amps. You see we're well beyond that. I'm reading, you know, 400, between 300 and 400 vo uh, amp surges on this starter. This is a huge amount of current flow. We can hear that in the way it's straining. You know, one of the things that make, makes a system crank this way would be if battery voltage was weak. Another one would be if we have a voltage drop problem, a bad power, bad ground. A bad power or bad ground to the starter or to the block or to the frame, you know, remember the battery's bolted to the frame back here and we need ground straps that go from the frame to the block up front. And those are all suspect on a car like this. But when you have this kind of amperage, that confirms your battery's fine, your starter's fine, your cables are fine. There is something mechanical going on here. Well, I say starter's fine. This could be a, a, a faulty starter motor, but we know it's a brand new starter motor. So we have high amperage. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull a couple spark plugs out and we're going to listen to the way it cranks. We're actually going to pull all four of them out and listen to the way it cranks with the spark plugs removed. Ready? Okay, we have all the plugs removed. All the plugs are soaking wet. What I didn't show you guys was when we were cranking this earlier, we were getting some sounds of ignition from the engine. On occasion, it seemed like it was it was kicking, we were hearing some backfiring too. Just some other clues. So again, the plugs are removed. Go ahead and uh, crank this over now. All the spark plugs are out. Let's take a listen to it. Okay, hang on. My amperage is even higher. That was like over 400 amps. Or over on my screen, 450 I think. I'm going to take this up to 1 volt, which is a 1,000 amp screen. Now go ahead and crank that. Okay, so you can see that four, it, we're going above 400. 0.4 is 400. Looks like about four to 450 amps of starter current with all the spark plugs removed. So definitely something mechanical going on with this. Next thing we're going to do, try to keep this as basic as possible. We're gonna pull the right front wheel. We're gonna go to the crankshaft. Just wanna see how it feels while we're turning this engine by hand. Okay, breaker bar is installed. It's not a very big breaker bar, but you get the idea. I'm going to attempt to turn this by hand and you will see that I can't at all. It's amazing the starter can turn this thing. Although we never really looked at the pulleys, I cannot budge this thing. It is that tight. So, in the past, I've gotten burned on calling an engine for this. I had a Volkswagen once that we thought the engine was seized up and ended up being the starter. Bendix was jammed into the flywheel, so it was a bad starter. Removed the starter and it freed it right up. So there are variables to this. I wanna show you another variable here. Okay, what I want you guys to watch is the harmonic balancer, which is the rusty pulley down there at the bottom, and then compare that to the serpentine belt and these pulleys that are below that. Go ahead and move it. You see the pulley turning. Okay, but none of these other 
accessory pulleys are turning. The belt isn't moving. It looks like that harmonic balancer wants to turn. And I want to thank Mr. Kaplan, our engine teacher, for coming over here and taking a look at this with us. He's the one that pointed this out, so I'm giving credit where credit is due. And what we suspect on this vehicle is that this serpentine belt, something is seized up. One of these drive pulleys are seized up on this belt. So we're going to remove the belt and then we're going to redo our tests. Okay guys, something I cannot show you because of how tight this is in here, but the alternator is seized up. No question about it. We pulled the serpentine belt off, turned all the pulleys by hand. We cannot turn the alternator. So we haven't tried to crank it yet. I still have all the plugs removed. We have the coil disabled. I want you to take a listen, see what this engine sounds like now. Cranking is our wrench off the harmonic balancer. Yes, good. Go ahead and crank that for me. All right, that sounds a lot better. Let's get the plugs put back in it, see if this thing runs. Okay, before we try to start this, I just want to give you guys an amperage reading here. This is with the plugs reinstalled. And I'm going to drop my amperage scale here. We'll go back down to a, to a 500 amp, 500 millivolt, but 500 amp setting. Go ahead and crank that. Okay, good. So that would be our, our relative compression reading. There's a lot of hash in there, and I'm not worried about the scope and filtering that out, but you can see that maybe on average we're probably around 100. There is a lot of hash in there. I don't know if I can fix that. Let's see if I can here. Let's not have this peak detected. And try that again. Go ahead and crank it. Okay, all right, that's better. Still have a lot of hash in here. I don't know exactly where that average is. Maybe around 100 amps of current compared to three, 400, almost 500 amps before. That's definitely a fix as far as getting this thing cranking normally. I think this thing's actually going to run. So let's go ahead and plug the coil back in. I'll come up front, we'll get a shot of, of this thing starting up. Okay, we haven't tried to start it yet. And I suspect it's going to cough and chug a little bit. Those plugs look pretty bad. We have the ignition system plugged back in. All we did was pull the plugs, disconnect our primary. Hopefully we put our plug wires back together correctly. And uh, go ahead and try to start it. Nice. Try it again. awesome guys listen this car was sold like this now you think about that how much is this this car worth with a a suspected faulty engine compared to this car with a seized up alternator I, you know I can't say any more about that shut the car off I don't know all of the history with this car yeah I'm not working worried about a little bit of smoke back there you know this car how long has it been sitting this way and, and who's done what to this car in the process remember a starter was put in this a battery was put in this so it needs an alternator no question about it not a seized up engine I think the lesson here is this when we have a car like this with excessive amperage and we have a, a crankshaft pulley that you cannot turn by hand you better be thinking about your accessory pulleys take the serpentine belt off that would be one another one i've seen i mentioned is i had a starter that was jammed into a flywheel and it was on a volkswagen now the difference with that one is it did not crank at all it was a click for the starter a heavy click and we had about seven or eight hundred amps of current on that one and when i tried to turn that one by hand i couldn't turn it that one ultimately ended up being a faulty starter we need to think about these things before we rush judgment on a seized up engine so that's the lesson here with this. Another one too was showing voltage and current from a battery really tells you a lot about the car. If, you, if someone would have done those tests to begin with, they would have never put a starter and battery in this car. So really good one, another variable to consider. Don't forget, 